Exercise, proper nutrition, and managing stress are the keys to healthy living for anyone. As a transplant recipient, taking care of yourself is even more important. How you feel will depend partly on how well you take care of yourself. This is a gift, this, this, this organ, and you're definitely grateful for it, so you want to take care of it. The first thing that I did is I told my dad to go and get Chinese food, and I had like three meals all out, and so I think it had a lot to do with finally I could eat normal. It's amazing. Once you're off dialysis and you have your kidney back, everything you couldn't eat, you can eat lots of again. Nutrition is extremely important in the post-transplant patient. The very most important thing is that the patients get actually enough calories and enough protein for healing. Be conscious about the food that you're eating. Don't just mindlessly eat. The chemicals you take into your body aren't just in pill form. They're in what you eat and what you drink. Part of the diet there is learn what foods are contributing what chemicals to your situation, if any, but it's not nearly as rigorous as it was on dialysis. They were on restricted diets in the past. Now their diet is freed up. They're wanting to eat all the things they couldn't have before, and they tend to go a little overboard. I probably gained close to 40 pounds after transplant, and then slowly you know, I began watching my diet. Some of the medications you are taking may increase your appetite making achieving a healthy weight goal seem like an uphill battle. The huge thing about the medications, anti-rejection medications, is weight gain. Everyone wants to blame the prednisone. It's not the prednisone. We've done studies where we've taken people off prednisone, they continue to gain weight. I know that I'm hungry, but I know that my body doesn't need it, so I just kind of push away. But you do not have to turn into the Hindenburg once you get a transplant. It's a whole body thing, and taking care of the whole body is going to um, help make sure that your kidney function stays good as well. Because if you're not healthy, your kidney won't be healthy. And the people who don't gain weight are really those pr pretty much who are exercising. Exercise is equally important. Patients that get up and move feel better. They also are less prone to weight gain. Eight months after the transplant, I started um, really getting back in shape and going to the gym. During more decent weather, I'll bicycle or walk a lot. I've, I like to do distance walking, five to ten miles. Each day, add on a little more activity or, you know, go out and do something that you want to do for yourself. And also, don't get stressed out. A lot of people, I think, set higher goals for themselves. I feel like I should be here already and I shouldn't be having the, you know, pain or, you know, any issues going on. It, it takes time. And I felt great. The more I walked, the better I felt. Sometimes it takes a little while. Nearly 30% of all kidney transplant patients are diabetics. Your treatment of diabetes will change after your transplant and keeping a close watch on your insulin levels can help you avoid complications with your new kidney. Probably about 10% of people will develop diabetes after transplant in the first two to three years. When their kidneys had failed, their body handled the insulin they made or that they took differently. It would hang on to that insulin. So once they get a new kidney, and once we start them on some of these medications, blood sugars go up. Diabetics should be able to recognize the symptoms of low blood sugar and take steps to avoid insulin reaction. Diabetes won't get better with a kidney transplant. Sometimes in the beginning may get a little bit um, more difficult to manage because of the prednisone. So that it's important that uh, either through the transplant center or your uh, diabetes specialist or your primary care doctor, whoever's going to be managing your insulin, that you stay in close touch with them and that you get your blood sugars checked regularly. Both the prednisone and the ProGraph, two of the medications that most patients are on for life, both can contribute to elevated blood sugars. Those first months will go by quickly, so don't forget calm. Communicate, keep appointments, get your labs, and take your meds. You have been given an incredible gift. It's now your responsibility to take care of it. Prior to transplant, the word transplant scared me. And, you know, I never thought that I was going to be normal, um, be able to have a normal life, or, you know, I thought my life was over, and now it's just, it's normal now. <laughs> I feel great. I feel like I could just do anything. They were just so happy for me, and they there was nothing that I could say that wasn't just, that they did that wasn't just good. I feel, I feel like I'm 18. 
I look 60 probably, but I feel like I'm 18 and that I'm, I'm still unlimited in my options. I think maybe it's like running the Boston Marathon is the way it feels when you get ones that you're whole again. The ilk of, of the, the transplant team at Barnes is just unbelievably comforting. The Barnes transplant team is the best. My life is going to be okay.